just as um, they did to them here. Uh, I stood up anyways and I was able to share the statement from the Global Table Gold Mine in the Dominican Republic. Um, yeah. So the yeah. Gold Mine in the Dominican Republic um, is completely, of course, destructive to the environment. There's been 84 deaths in the region since the mine began commercial production. Um, over 2,000 livestock have died. Barmy's the people live in complete poverty. It's so contaminated um, that they've lost 80% of their cacao production. They can no longer eat the mangoes in the region. Uh, it is, it is A lot of cows died. Horrible. Many cows have died. So uh, I was there to share that statement um, that the folks in the Dominican Republic and at the Program Mine do not want Barrett Gold in their communities. Um, and they demand relocation away from the mine. And as Canadian citizens, it's our responsibility to hold our corporations accountable for yes. what they're doing abroad. And that's why we're all here today, so thank you. Woo! Okay, and Catherine, did you want to say something just for the cameras first, and then... And where's Susan? Susan, you're recording this. We don't have a mic, right? Okay. We don't have a no mic, mic, so I'll just shout. Okay. Yeah. Shout. shout on the so, camera. It was really unbelievable this year because I think you've probably already heard this, but um, you know, we've been doing this year after year after year using this forum to allow people to have a voice in Canada and talk to the shareholders and directors directly. And the way you get that voice is by having someone who has one or two shares give their proxy to the people who need to really speak here and who Barrett needs to hear from. And this year they rejected almost all the proxies and there was no reason given. So when we got down there, I mean, we were basically escorted down and when we got to the desk and we provided the proxies, they looked at the names and, they, and the woman said, oh, hang on a minute. And she went away and got some guy to come over and say, oh, sorry, no, you can't, you can't, uh, you can go in, but you can have a visitor's pass, but you can't speak. So I, the first thing that came to my mind was silence is violence. You know, this is violence. This is violence. Violence 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 is violence. And so it was exactly what we've been talking about the night before when we had the meeting on silence is violence. You know, this is how you silence people. You take away their voice. And so the only way we could still have their voices heard was they stood up with me and I had to read the statements. Um, and so thank God at least their statements were heard. And of course, we got the usual response from the company saying, oh, no, no, you know, we know that there's some bad things have happened, but we've dealt with them very well. We're quite proud of how we've dealt with them. And if you have a problem, come and talk to us and, you know, we'll, we'll be available to talk to you. But uh, they also said that the women had received, the women who have been raped, gang raped, had received things like uh, health care, education for their children, um, startup businesses. And that's just not true. That's just simply not true. Um, and that's one of the things that Everlyn is very clear about because she's one of the 119 women who they have given some limited remedy to only because of the activism that's gone on here and, and, and the reports that have been written about this. They spent years denying that women were being well, raped and gang raped. And it's only recently that they've accepted some. So they've given 119 women some remedy, but not what they should have received and not what they need to put their lives back. Women are still being raped of the poor girl. And in fact, it was happening the week before we came here. They haven't received any remedy, and their cases have been brought forward to the company, and they have case numbers, but their cases were brought forward in 2015, and there's been no action on that at all. And so what what did they, what was the response from the shareholders to Joycelyn? Oh, why don't you come and see us about your case? Well, it's not just about her case. You know, it's about That they're just ignoring. And so the response again was, well, why don't you come and see us about your case? Well, that's not that it's about one person. It's about the whole situation there. The waste that is dumped into the rivers, dumped into the valleys. It's destroying their, their ability to feed themselves through their gardens. It's about the men that are being beaten up and killed by the security guards and by the police that guard the mine. And it's about the women who are being raped. how well they contain their waste at other places. Like we know that there have been all kinds of breaches of waste dams in Valadero and in Pueblo Viejo, and they keep talking about how they're containing their waste. Well, in Porco, they don't even try to contain their waste. It goes directly into the environment, which is why it's destroying the whole area where these people live. 
So now that everyone's wrapped